Welcome to how to design a brand document using InDesign. Adobe InDesign is essentially a wireframing software. Don't think of it as a serious print production software, although it is classically known to be used by print designers. Obviously, you can design most everything in for print, whether it's a business card or a catalog or flyers or wedding invitations, books, um, the cubicle book itself was designed fully uh, through InDesign. So what we'll do today is we're going to divide the workshop into two. The first part, I will go through a very basic document design. And hopefully through this, you will learn the four or five tricks that will get you started and get you familiar with the, the software. And on the second part, we will design something that's a little more colorful, a little more creative. You'll probably agree with me when I say that the most familiar document um, in our lifetime is the resume, a badly designed CV, especially if you're applying in the creative industry, um, might invite a little bit of judgment. So InDesign is a great way to spruce up this very important document. Before this session, I went to Google <laughs> to download an example CV because it turns out I actually don't have a CV myself. Yeah, it's been years. Um, I've been queen of this castle for, I don't know how many years now, but I got the job because of my wonderful singing and dancing. It's a CV of an Amy Nash, oh wow, landed accounts with Comcast, Amazon, blah, 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 worth a combined 5.3 million annually. Good job, Amy. So we have this wonderful one pager document from uh, Miss Amy Nash. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change it to Shinny Park because I feel like a lot of these uh, details I'm not really, shinnypark.com, I'm not really connecting with work experience. Creative director. I mean, we'll, we'll keep all the, the details. I think skills here, maybe we can do skills and languages. So for instance, English and uh, Korean advanced. Yeah, so we've just kept it quite simple here. We're gonna go into Adobe InDesign, create new, as you do. This dialog box for new document settings will pop up. I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll go into print and we'll go for A4. Don't really need to mess with these widths, widths and heights. Units stay, keep in millimeters. Orientation, we want it to look upright. Um, it really is up to you also, because you might decide that you want to, to print your resume creatively on a postcard or a little tiny business card. It's really up to you, but we're just gonna do a classic resume orientation up. Uh, pages, just keep it at one. Facing pages, I would, I would uncheck because we're not making a booklet. We're not making something that has facing pages. Um, again, unless you are making a book for your resume, that's really up to you. Because resumes are normally received digitally, uh, I wouldn't terribly worry about these columns and column gutters or margins or bleed in slugs. These you don't really need to worry about. These are also a little bit more of an intermediate uh, setting um, and more to do with print production uh, when you're designing catalogs and books and you have to deal with big printers that need all of these details. Okay, A4 print create. You'll see that a brand new page is created with these guidelines that you've set in the settings. This should be the default workspace that InDesign suggests people start with. And I personally stay in essentials, but if you wanted to toggle it on, or if you find that um, some of these tabs are missing, just go up to window workspace essentials and go ahead and click that. You'll see a property tab up here, pages tab, CC libraries tab. If you know me, you know how much I love CC libraries. Um, I have all my projects and clients saved here. I also have different versions of projects. I personally like to go into view screen mode preview to have a slightly more clean mode. Uh, it's up to you, but you'll find that it's a lot easier to work with something like this. Okay, when you look at the left side here, so you have the type tool here, which is very easy. It acts like Photoshop type tools. You can move it around. You can increase and decrease uh, here we go. We have a line tool as well as the shape tool down here. These are all just shapes. Appearances of which we can change up here in the properties panel. 
a free transform tool that helps you transform the objects and the eyedropper tool. Here you, you can see a little arrow and you'll see there are three options, color theme tool, eyedropper tool. It's, it's good to just classically keep it at the eyedropper tool, but I can teach you how to use the color theme tool as well, but maybe in a later episode. Right, so let's start with one of the four important techniques that will help you understand InDesign a little better. The first one would be file place or command D. The place functionality essentially places assets into your document, whether it's photos or text or your logo. In InDesign, what you're doing is you're linking live objects. So the best way to explain this is to place this image file here. And you'll see up here in the links panel that this is linked to the very file. If you go to link, or for instance, if I reveal in Finder, it'll show exactly where I took it from. For example, if I were to change this file in Photoshop to a black and white image, and I saved it in InDesign, now there's an alert saying this file has been updated. So what I'll do is I'll refresh it, and it, it refreshes to the file. So this is how live it is. I wanted to place my logo, but my logo is already in CC library. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag it in. Yeah. Let's deal with paragraphs separately. All of these have different uses. So for instance, work experience is a header. Okay. So this is a separate entity as this one, right? Let's use this important information. Um, what I'll do is I'll probably, yeah. The second trick from the four important tricks that I'd like to teach you today is paragraph styling. Styles, paragraph styles. Yep. What this does is sets a rule. Uh, I want to treat this information a little differently from how I treat this information. So let's put that in here as well. Yep. I normally go for Helvetica is part of my Shinny Park branding. Um, so what should we call this information? And what we're doing is we're giving rules. We're giving shortcuts to styles. Uh, usually it's bold, Helvetica bold, like small. And the case is uppercase. We'll revisit this later and I'll show you how you can revisit it. As you can see, InDesign is incredibly kind. It uh, gives you very helpful guides to show it, the alignment as well as sizing of nearby objects. This one, because it's a, an introductory paragraph, we're going to open up a new paragraph style introduction and we're, I'm going to make this big. Um, underestimate the fonts that you already have in your system. Minion Pro is free. It comes with Apple. All you need to do is just be a little more creative with the, the fonts that are available to you. Don't worry about, you know, whether or not you have uh, an expensive font family. Let's do it like this. And here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add Shinny Park. I'm going to add an M, M dash. I like M dashes. I'm not sure if you realized <laughs> in cubicle we we love m dashes and you kind of want to avoid these stack we call them stack hyphens you want to jiggle around so that there's maybe only one or max two hyphens within a paragraph okay to use line tools what we'll do is We'll make a bit of a border up here. So we're going to do a solid border of maybe three points. Yep. Should we do maybe four? I'm designing so that you can see how a very simple resume can come together with the most rudimentary uh, skill sets. So all I've taught you so far is the two. And so far we've, we've done already really well. <laughs> we've learned about paragraph styles. We've also learned about placing. Now, at this point, we've only placed the logo, but it's very important to, to remember placing. So let's do this. We're going to divide the, the general resume into a sort of a one-fifth, one-sixth situation. 
Let's place this here. What I'll do is I'll also also separate that one. Yeah. And this one, I think the stroke is zero, so it's invisible. Stroke 0 0.5. Obviously, my personal branding involves lines like this, a grid grid system, but yours doesn't have to. You can simply work with using white spaces. You can work with color as well. Okay, so for instance here, I can't seem to avoid hyphens. So what I'm gonna do is, um, where there's a hyphen here, I'm gonna give it a, a forced break. So shift enter, will give it a forced break. Just pressing enter means that you're making a new paragraph, which, which isn't something we wanna do. So we want everything to be contained with this one paragraph. Let's do ex work experience. Um, here, let's open up a type box again work experience and we're going to do a, what should we call it? A header. Okay. We're going to keep it at Helvetica. All caps. Maybe this one is a bit bigger and bold. Yeah. I think I like that. Yeah. And that will be saved as header. And what's nifty about paragraph styles is that if I had selected this paragraph, right? and I clicked on header, it changes immediately to what this looks like. So Im imagine if you have 400 pages of question and answers and your, your client says, hey, can uh, questions be in a different font from answers? You're not gonna sit there for hours um, styling every single paragraph manually. You're simply going to use these paragraph styles. The easiest way to duplicate is to, to hold down option. Can you see these double arrows happening? And you drag it out. Yeah. And it duplicates. Copy paste. It could be a little bigger so that it includes all the date. I would like to have a little bit of hierarchy of what um, is important in terms of information. I'm going to put creative director under the, the yeah. I would really not recommend using enters or spaces to create a uh, design. Yeah, you should never be using these manual given spacing. You should always be using these values here. You can see here space before, space after, and these deal with paragraph. Inner Vista Inc. is one paragraph, and because there is a hard enter, that's the second paragraph. Now I'm going to give it a space before so that it's, yeah, there's a little bit of distinction. What I'm going to do is we're going to style this so that it doesn't look like bullet points. And this is going to be also done with paragraph styles. Okay. New paragraph. We're sticking with minion pro, and then I'm going to add some spacing. Can you see here that it increases the spaces between paragraphs and this, you didn't have to use uh, an enter. It, it's not messy. Uh, spacing after something like that. Yep. I think even tracking can come down a little bit. You can see that immediately these are bullet points without bullets. There are other ways obviously of doing bullet points. It's a, it's a bit of an intermediate technique bullets in in design here, but it's it's down here. Jiggle it around, see what works. You have to keep working at the spacing and change things if it doesn't really work. For instance, I think maybe this is a little too big, so I'm just gonna change it here. And you can see that you might need to do a little bit of fiddling around. Okay, creative director, rampant chicken group, September. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate this by holding down option. And then going to copy paste that guy in and obviously bring title before three millimeter. Copy paste, clean that up a little. Yep. Okay, so depending on this, I, I think maybe I like this guy to be a bit smaller. So maybe we'll change this to title and date. Okay, here as well, we're gonna change it to title and date and go into that guy and then give a space after. Yeah, already it looks a little more clean. We're gonna duplicate 
this bar here, duplicate header. And you can see here that, again, politely, so polite, it suggests the spacing that we might want to use. We'll do date after title, and we'll keep it at title and body. Yeah, like that. And we'll duplicate this one. Yep, clean that up a bit. So this is a good error here. You can see that there's an overflow and you'll see down here as well in the overflow pre-flight panel. When you click on this, it'll show that there's text outside the text frame. So all you need to do is you need to increase it or double click and you'll see that it turns green. So we'll duplicate this one, duplicate that. Skills and languages. Because languages is caught, either we'll open this one up but I'm not, I'm not loving that. So what I'll do is I'll shift enter and break it into a new line. Use this. And obviously we want bigger header. Yeah. So the third basic trick is tabs. Shift command T or up here there is type tabs. Yep, you'll see this box pop up and, and here, literally all you need to do is drag where you want the first tab to be. Now the second tab could be this one. So imagine if I clicked on, let's say here, you'll see that it aligns to this and you can change where, how it aligns. If it aligns to the left, it aligns to, you know, centrally. I pull it out like this so that it aligns to the boxes above and, and we're going to give this a shift break and then tab again. And you can see that it it's simply, yeah, actually communication, breaking communication like this. Business breakdown here, tab, project, tab. See, super easy. Oh, I like this. Yep. Okay, so before I export, I want to show you the fourth important technique that I haven't mentioned yet. Um, and that is the master page. I really don't like the idea that they're calling it a master because does it mean that there's a slave as well? <laughs> um, anywho, you can see that it's uh, facing pages because we started with facing pages, but you can just get rid of yeah that facing page. As an example, this might turn into a 40 page legal document. And what you don't want to be doing is for every single damn page to be adding all of these elements in there. You know, like it, it, it'll take time. What if it was a, a thousand page legal document, right? So what we want to do is decide what elements, for instance, I like the top and bottom border and I like this universal yeah, column. And we have the detail and maybe just the logo. Yeah, let's just take the logo. We're gonna do an X to cut, and then we're gonna go up to master, and then we're, we're pasting in place. And this will always appear regardless of how many pages you add. And you see here, two, three, four, it's all added in. And if at one point you decided, okay, actually this page, I don't really want to have these. All you need to do is do a right click, override all master page items, and these will be clickable here. 
So it really is just using masters as as a rule in itself. And you can add more masters. You can add, for instance, there is a section of your document that needed a slightly different treatment, then I would add a new master. Yeah, prefix B, B et cetera, et cetera. So it's as easy as that. It's really making your workflow a lot easier, a lot more efficient. Uh, you can really design pages and documents really quickly as long as you have your branding set up. To export, file, export, or we do command E. Okay, let's call it episode three CV. Adobe PDF Interactive is fine. And then go ahead and save. Yeah, that's it, you just save. And it'll pop up in Acrobat. And it was as easy as that. All right, so the second part of this workshop, I'd like to do something a little more creative. Now that I've taught, you how to sort of get around in design and the basic four or five tools. Let's do something creative. I'd like for you to give me a brand that that is a little bit up my street, don't give me something too hard, um, that I can learn their branding in about five minutes. If you'd like to go ahead and just give me a couple brands uh, off the top of your head that I might be able to just take the logos and some assets and to design a, a brand document, yeah. All right, so we have Arquette to Totem. Okay, give me give me five minutes to to study the branding a little bit, the typography and how they use typography, layouts, images. Let's create new again, and for this document, I'd like it to be landscape so that it's it's more of a presentation, a full screen presentation than a document document. So orientation, we're gonna change it to landscape. You can see that the width and height, height? <laughs> width and height changes automatically. Uh, we don't need it to be facing pages because it's not really a book that is, yeah, it's it's not really a landscape book. It's It's a one after the other page document. Pages one, leave all the columns and all of these again. Yeah, and go ahead and open. Okay, I'm toggling this screen mode to preview again. It's a lot cleaner. You saw before that it's a lot cleaner. So Tim has a, a top bar here that always, always exists wherever you go on the site. So we're just gonna do a top bar. And in properties, I'm gonna set it to quite a thin line. Holding down option. And what's great about InDesign is that you can see that it snaps. The software kind of detects the rule that you want to give it to the document, so it snaps in place. Again, using Command D or Place, we're going we're going to bring the logo in. Where is that logo? Here we go. We saw that they don't really make it very big. So we'll do Summer 2020 Lookbook. Yeah, and we'll go into Paragraph Style, and we'll call that doc title. We're going to emulate this font. I think we'll do a pretty good job of either Arial or Helvetica, depending on whether you are, I mean, this is already very similar. Just make it slightly smaller, um, align its center, and that is it. I think this is Donzo. Clean that up, center align. Maybe it could be a little bit up. Okay, so this is a good first first page. Now that you know that these two uh, bars will always be there, uh, I'm gonna make this a master. So cut, so command X, go into master, and then right click, paste in place. It'll always be there, whatever page you are on. So I'm gonna add a second page. You'll see that the elements in the master appear automatically. And here, I'm gonna make it a little more visual using some of the the pictures that we saved. So again, using it, the place tool, we're gonna place a, an image here and I wanna dissect it right in the middle. And you can see that when I'm moving this, this box, it'll snap to exactly where the half point of the doc document is, which is very handy. Okay, I'm gonna hold down option and, rep uh, and replicate. And when you click on the box and press place again, it opens up this dialogue again. 
asking you what you want to replace this box with. So let's do this one. And here, because I saved it really badly from Instagram, what I'm, uh, I think it might need to be a black and white image here, actually. Maybe this one. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, I quite like this. You can see that I, I didn't really do a good job of screen capping it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double click into this box, which shows me the actual element inside of this box. So imagine the box to be a mask and everything outside the mask is not shown. Double click on this, make it a little bit more big. Okay, so I like this as a second page. Now the third page, I'd like it to be a product page. So we'll maybe do this, make it the same stroke width. And I'd like to find sort of a third point. Figure out what the uh, width of the document is. For in, in our case, when you just click out of everything, you'll see that under properties, you'll see the width is two, 297 millimeter. X is where it is on the X axis. So 297 divided by three. Yeah, here we go. So we're going to hold down on option, duplicate this. And I don't think InDesign understands thirds very well. Yeah, it doesn't really understand thirds. So what I'm gonna do is again on the X axis, 297 millimeters uh, multiplied by 0 0.6666, which is two thirds. Yeah, here we go. And then it, it clicks in. Okay, here, command place again. Uh, let's add some products. Yep. And we're just going to kind of eyeball it. I'm gonna duplicate it one more time and Command D while I'm clicking on the box. Let's do this guy and then Command D on a new box. And we'll add these. Yeah, that's good enough. I like this, but I think when I look at their website, I can see that the, the image is a full bleed. It goes to all the borders. So what I'll do is, I'd like to give it a rectangle background. So clicking on the rectangle tool. So we're just gonna target this. Yep, and all we need to do is arrange it to the back. Um, hold down option, duplicate one more time. Uh, this is a slightly different gray. So what I'll do is I'll just take this eyedropper tool. Yeah, and that looks good. And we're lacking a logo here as well. They're usually quite small, so we're gonna do it very small. Yeah, right in the middle. Uh, a handy trick here is to lock items so that when you're moving around, you're not clicking on things. Okay, can knit ivory, can knit ivory. So I'm gonna increase the letting just a little bit. Yeah, here we go. I'm really happy with that. It already looks really similar. And duplicate that. I'm not really gonna go into the detail of changing everything. Let's do another product page. The easiest way to duplicate a similar page style is just to drag the page down to the box so that it duplicates. And here, all you need to do is click on the box, Command D, change the item inside. Okay, let's just do swimwear. Okay, now because the gray boxes behind it are locked, let's go up to object, unlock all on spread, and then you have access to them again. Okay, so immediately you have two pages there. Oh, I wanna try overriding the master here. Yeah, I'm gonna do a full bleed one image page. So I'm just gonna open up the, the box here, which is the mask, and then replacing whatever is inside into something else, maybe this picture and double clicking and all you need to do is kind of increase yeah okay so here you can see that it's covering everything that the master gives right and as i told you in part one you just have to override all master page items which means the master page is now free i don't really like this master yeah, analogy. What we want to do is arrange center back so that you see all the, the black lines. And because I think I saw in their landing page, um, yeah, the lines into white when there's something dark. 
So that's what we're going to do. We're going to change this to a white. Again, the type should be white, copy. And here, because it's such a big object, I'm going to lock it just to keep it from moving around. OK, paste in place. This guy, fill. Let's make it white. Paper is white. Logo, paste in place. What you don't want to do is, is try to place things manually. So for instance, if I had the logo here and I just pasted it, just pasted it like this, you're going to have to find exactly where, yeah, it's, it's just hard. So paste in place is your friend. Okay, good. I like it. There are just some references that I'd like to show you here. If I open up, for instance, a kind of a boring document, this is also a very good way of practicing your typesetting skills. Just consider it like doing scales before you play a piano piece. Uh, branding is reinforced by every part of your business, whether it's a document or a signboard or your business card. Typography is a really great tool of reinforcing branding. This is an example of a creative intentions document that we use at Cubicle. It's composed of just very simple techniques. Okay, and this is a cube document produced for your Cubicle grant. And you can see that it's a lot more colorful. It's all about paragraph styling, spacing, type boxes, placing images. Okay, all right, there you have it.